Bienvenidos, welcome. Today, Next Door Media Group kicks off Hispanic Heritage Month with our digital special, Sabor Latino. We're streaming live from the WFLA newsroom in Tampa, Florida this afternoon, and we're taking you on a trip across America to meet acclaimed Hispanic American chefs cooking up traditional Latino dishes alongside reporters from various Next Door stations from California to New York. Hello, everyone. I'm WFLA anchor Jennifer Peñate alongside WFLA's Marco Villarreal. And today is going to be an exciting show. Marco, we're going to be hungry by the end of this. Oh, so hungry. We're taking you all across the country. We're going to take a look at food from uh, Hispanic and Latino American cultures, right? And that's why you guys will probably be hungry, too. You'll have to head to your closest Hispanic restaurant after this, right? Absolutely. <laughs> you um, are Argentinian and Mexican. True, yes. I'm Salvadorian, so already here, three countries are being represented. A lot of culture happening a right here. A lot of culture happening, um, and I'm really excited to introduce these chefs who have really drawn inspiration through their heritage, the countries of origin, and um, unique flavors and unique uh, plants and spices to their home country, which is really, really cool. Which it's fun because for our American friends who maybe have never gone to other countries like this, this is a way to introduce them mm -hmm. to our culture and to different foods and things like that. And uh, I never hear complaints from friends when we nope. take them to Spanish restaurants, right? <laughs> I get a lot of requests. Can you cook me this? Yeah. Can you make that? <laughs> How much are you going to pay me? Right. Huh? All right. Well, let's get started with this journey across America. And we begin in Chicago. WGN's Lourdes Duarte introduces us to Michelin star chef Carlos Gaitan. He travels all over Mexico to draw inspiration for all of his dishes. And today he's cooking up some scallop el pozole. For decades, Carlos Gaitan has dazzled Chicago with his food, becoming the first Mexican-born chef to earn a Michelin star. He gets his ideas from his hometown of Guerrero, and he still travels to Mexico often. Stepping foot in just about every food market in the country, always bringing back recipes, spices, and ideas like el pozole. It's only at this time of the year, we make yellow pozole because the corn is fresh. So is it more of a stew? Yes, is that the way stew. that you yes. would describe it? Okay, so, so let's get started with piece number one. Okay, what we gotta do, we gotta clean the corn, obviously. So this is what we do it. We get a towel so the, the corn doesn't jump. I'm gonna use the corn as well to flavor the, uh, the water that we have, the stock. But how long does it take to make something like this? No, no more than 30 minutes. Next thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna tie some of the vegetables and we're gonna saute the vegetables. This is uh, poblano pepper. Poblanos, normally they're not spicy and we're gonna use some of the uh, serrano peppers as well. This one's they're spicy normally and we're gonna use some garlic and tomatillos. The tomatillos is gonna be a little sour then I'm gonna incorporate this beautiful flavor to the broth, basically. And how many tomatillos? We're gonna use eight. Eight tomatillos. Uh, right now we're using only two serrano peppers because they're really spicy. So we don't want to create something too spicy. I'm gonna add one more thing on there. This is el pasote. El pasote is an herb that we use in Mexico. It's very unique. It has these uh, beautiful aromas. Uh, normally we use it for the beans or for the stews. Uh, normally we don't blend them. We just put it right in there and we separate it because it's really strong flavors. The water in here is getting all the flavor from the corn. So the sauce is gonna be cooking on probably for five minutes, no more than that. Now we're gonna blend the ingredients. We're gonna put it right in here. We don't need that. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna incorporate a little bit of the uh, corn stock in here, blend the uh, vegetables. Now we're gonna put everything in here. And then we're gonna add another piece of this beautiful pasote. And we're just gonna let it uh, boil a little bit more and it should be ready in about three minutes. In the meantime, we can cook the scallops. Let me chop a little bit this one. This so this one, one you're chopping, why, why is that? For I'm the scallops? Just for the scallops, just to get some beautiful flavors. You wanna do a julienne, so a little bit of black pepper. And salt. Normally to cook a really perfect scallops, normally I cook in one side, that's it. 
Escalos normally are really easy to overcook, so you don't want to do that. Let's start plating. We are going to put some of the uh, broth in here. One more. Okay, I'm trying to grab lots of, of corn. Uh, yeah, okay. got a beautiful pasote right there. And I put the uh, escalos, I'm gonna put it right on top. Very nice. Right there. Normally I like to garnish it with lime. I use some of the micros on top of the uh, okay. escalos. Oh, look yeah. at me, fancy, fancy. A little more, un poquito más, okay. See? Beautiful. Maybe a little epazote. Beautiful leaves. To make it a little bit more fancy. Right there. Mira eso. Boom. Boom. Just beautiful. You know, dishes like that can be very intimidating, Marco, but he made it look simple. He explained it he very did. well. Something that always impressed me about my parents growing up making very intricate dishes like this is yeah. that they never had measurements or clear instructions. Yeah, it's they true. They just said, tanteale, which meant just kind of guess a little yeah. bit with how much you're going to sprinkle oregano or salt or whatever, See? spice, you know, just throw in a little bit in there. It'll be fine. Un poquito aquí, yeah. un poco más de esto, yeah. right? And then you just taste it. Una probadita. Yeah. Oh, but it's number one. You got to go back for seconds and seconds thirds, right? And thirds yeah. And you just keep going until it's gone. Well, that looks so good. And I, you know, and just to give you an idea, so this is a Mexican dish, but, and that's what's great about all of these Latin American countries. Even within each country, there's so many different flavors and cultures within the different states, uh, within those states. Because I've never had this. I've had regular pozole, uh -huh. but I've never had it like this. And now of I want to try it. Yeah, yeah. Never done it. Exactly. And the spice level. Um, the spiciness is, is very uh, prominent in Mexican cuisine when we transition back here to Tampa, yes. where we're going to feature a Cuban restaurant. It's more spices, herbs, more earthy, more, more the tomato, natural flavors, natural flavors yeah. rather than the heat. Which brings us to empanadas yes. in the Colombia and Ybor City. Of course, Ybor City, very rich in Cuban um, culture. They call it um, another Habana Cuba, Another, pretty much, yeah, you know, you can Cuba, find yeah. uh, hand-rolled cigars and bread still made fresh every day, just like grandma used to make them. And it is absolutely amazing. And, and, and we have one of the oldest restaurants in the state of Florida here, but it's also one of the largest Spanish restaurants in the world, the Colombian. You can see how beautiful it is right there on your screen. Jennifer, you got to go and sit down with, uh, it's Andrea Gonsmart. Yeah. She's the great, great granddaughter yeah. of the guy who started this restaurant. Absolutely. And we made some picadillo empanadas. Oh, all right. Show me. What are we doing? What are we learning? It's one of America's most historic restaurants, the oldest in the state of Florida and an icon in Tampa, the Columbia. Sits in the heart of Tampa's Latino quarter, Ybor City. Founded in 1905 as a cafe, it served Cuban immigrants working in cigar factories. Decades later, third generation family members Cesar and Adela Gonsmart left their careers as concert musicians to add their mark to the family business. They transformed the Colombia into an elegant Spanish style restaurant. Both have passed, but their legacy continues with their children and their grandchildren. This brings us to Andrea Gonsmart, who represents the fifth generation and who's sharing a family favorite we can all make at home. What are we cooking up? We're going to be making a very traditional Cuban Spanish dish called a pic picadillo empanada. Picadillo is also a main dish often served with rice. Picadillo is made out of ground meat, saute your onions, your green peppers, your tomato, your garlic, add your ground meat, cumin, Raisins are optional. I personally love to add raisins because it adds a little bit of sweetness. A sweetness that takes her right back to her grandmother's kitchen. My grandmother made picadillo for me growing up my whole entire life. And every now and then she would put it in these delicious little pastry pockets and turn them into empanadas. Those empanadas, now a staple menu item. But we're going to get our dough first. So you can either make your dough at home or you can just buy a pre-bought dough from the grocery store, such as a pie crust, or you can even find them just like this. Perfect. We're going to fill it with the traditional picadillo. There's a fine line between putting too much in it and putting not enough. Not enough, yes. You don't want an empty uh, pastry. Yes, but if you put too much, it'll blow up in the oven. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> we don't want that either. Okay, there we go. 
And the filling can really be anything you'd like it to be, correct? Absolutely. You can kind of be creative with it. You could do a chicken empanada, you could do a crab empanada, you could do a cheese empanada. So you can make it into whatever you want. So important part, we have to make this seal. So we're gonna dip our finger in there. Egg wash, this acts as our glue. If you don't have eggs or if you can't use eggs, you can just use water. And we're gonna fold it over into a half a moon. Okay. Press it along the edges to seal it. Get your fork, fork. very fancy tools it requires. All right. And you're gonna ah. press it along the edge. So this is how you get the fancy detail. The picadillo empanadas are now ready to bake or fry. This is what it looks like when it's baked. You brush it with the egg wash that we sealed the empanada with, so it gives it that pretty shiny um, look to it. Or you can fry it. This is the way we do it at the restaurant. So either way, you can't go wrong. Sweet success. Either way, baked or fried, these look absolutely delicious. And the lesson here, anyone can make them. Absolutely anyone can make them. Once you have your pica de made, all you have to do is make your empanadas. It's as easy as that. So next time you're in Tampa, join the list of those who've been to the Columbia, from Babe Ruth to Derek Jeter to Madonna and George Clooney. Take a seat in the courtyard dining room, enjoy a picadillo empanada, and listen to Cesar Gonsmart's violin melodies playing throughout the restaurant. His legacy as a concert musician, as alive as is this family business. I'm just going to say, um, please be glad that I'm not a cook and I'm not making <laughs> empanadas because <laughs> I made two yeah. and I didn't put enough of the of the picadillo oh. in them and how disappointing would that be to get an empty pastry pocket like oh. that'd be awful she I was, was a pro obviously. i was hoping you'd bring some but i don't see any here in front of the table we'll go after this okay. to celebrate yeah you know what's interesting too is picadillo to me having grown up argentinian those are just empanadas it's the same filling they use in argentina uh -huh. but what i had never experienced which is something that comes out of cuba uh and spain is the picadillo without the empanada, right. which is just as good, too, yeah. with the rice and everything. Yeah, and El, El Salvador, where I'm from, we call it salpicón, oh. and it's beef, um, usually oxtail, okay. that we would make stew with, but then you would chop it up and add some cilantro, some onion, and you would eat that cold with some rice. Oh, that sounds so good. Mm -hmm. so I love it. Different variations for every country. Yes. It's, it's very, very fascinating. Well, what's great, too, speaking of uh, another dish that we can all enjoy, because we've all had it, if you ever go to a Mexican restaurant, right, there's always a staple on the menu. It's enchiladas. You can have enchiladas de queso, de pollo, what have you. Whatever you have, there's always enchiladas, right? So now we're going to head over to Austin, Texas. That's where KXAN Stephanie Gilbert, she's introducing us to Chef Marisola Godinez of El Meson. She's going to teach us how to make these delicious enchiladas. Well, did you know that enchiladas not only originated in Mexico, but they date as far back as the Aztecs. The root of the word literally means to season with chili. So who better to show us how to make this traditional dish than my very good friend, Chef Maricela here at El Maison in Austin, Texas. How you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm excellent. I'm gonna be even better once I get to taste what you're chefing up today. So let's get started. Yeah, thank you so much for coming. So I'm gonna show you how to make uh, enchiladas verdes, which are very traditional in Mexico City. The first thing that we're gonna start cooking is the chicken. Excellent. So you're gonna add your chicken, one third of a white onion, and three garlic cloves. We're gonna add some salt and water. This recipe, um, it's super simple. You, I mean, anyone can make it. The secret to make a very good salsa verde is to, basically you're steaming your uh, tomatillos. Mm -hmm. We're gonna place our tomatillos in two serranos. We're only adding one cup of um, water, and we're just gonna cover it and, you know, cook them until they change color and they're soft. So I'm gonna show you, basically when they're done, this is how they're gonna look. This is so easy to make because basically just, you cook your chicken, you cook your salsa, and that's it. And now I'm gonna add two garlic cloves. We're gonna blend it. So perfect, it's a really, really nice consistency. It's not too watery, like I said, and not too thick. I'm gonna show you now the chicken. Okay. I already have some shredded here. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of broth so it's not too dry. It and looks so nice. tender. We're gonna move to another place so we can show you how to make the enchiladas. Perfect. All right, Joe, we've got our chicken and our sauce complete, and we've transitioned to the stovetop. So Chef Maricela, what's next? Okay, 
So first thing, we're gonna cook the salsa as I was telling you. So we're gonna warm up our pan and we're just gonna add a little bit of olive oil. And then what I like to do is cook a little bit of onions just before we add the sauce. We're just gonna cook it for a little bit. And I think we're ready. I'm just gonna remove all the onion. We're gonna add our salsa. So this is what we're looking for for foam, right? Yes, exactly. So you can actually see it forming right here. Uh huh. And it'll disappear in just a few minutes. So while that is cooking, we're just gonna lower the heat and we're gonna prepare our tortillas. I like to use corn tortillas made with white corn okay. instead of the yellow one. Okay, we're gonna add a little bit of oil and then quickly we're gonna warm up our tortillas. Uh, the reason why we're doing this is just to make the tortillas to be you know, flexible and and be able to fold them and roll them. So I'm gonna make two for you and two for me. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> okay, you see that sauce is almost ready. And I'm gonna show you how to make your enchiladas Mexico City style. So next, we have our tortillas and our chicken. What you do is you just Dip your tortilla, add some chicken to it, and just fold it. We're gonna add a little bit of queso fresco. Final that touch from be, your mama. Yes, some lettuce. And oh, that looks some beautiful. Cream. Ready to try them? Girl, you know I'm ready. <laughs> Let's go eat. All right, this has all been excellent, but now for the best part, I get to dig in. I'm so excited to try these out, Chef Marisela. Thank you. Mm, thank you thank so you. much. Thank these you. are delicious. Thank you for coming. Cheers to you, my friend. Cheers. And you gotta have a margarita with your enchiladas, right? Oh, <laughs> so. yeah, you have to. <laughs> what I always am amazed at when I go to a Mexican restaurant and have some really good chicken enchiladas, because I can't do this. Their chicken is so tender and juicy. El mío sale todo seco. Like, it's all dry. You need more sauce on there. It's really bad. Bring so. on the hot sauce. No one's going to come to my house for enchiladas. That looked really, really good. Leave it to Chef Maricela. Yeah, she'll take Leave care of you. Leave it to her. Absolutely. Well, let's, uh, what do you say we go to New York next? Yeah, also known as... Pequeño Puerto Rico, right? It's like yep. Puerto Rico 2.0. A lot of Boricuas there. So many, so many up there. And actually, so, and the Puerto Ricans, they got so much good food too. Uh, Pix 11, Shirley Chan, she caught up with renowned chef Alejandra Ramos. She's making camarones mm. enchilados. It's a dish that she grew up making with her mom. Vamos a ver. I say that my mom taught me how to cook and my dad taught me how to eat. My dad's a big eater. He loves going to restaurants. He loves tasting new flavors and new dishes. And my mom was the one who kind of taught me some of those old classic dishes. Alejandra Ramos started cooking as a young teen. Growing up in New York City's Puerto Rican community, food was a part of the fabric of her rich heritage. Cooking is a huge part of Latino culture throughout, you know, the different countries because it really is a way of both you're taking care of the people that you love, you're, you're feeding them. Now a chef, cooking show host, and lifestyle and food blogger, Alejandra invited us into her studio kitchen to show me how to make a classic Puerto Rican dish, a veggies and shrimp stew simmering in tomato and spices. It's one of her favorites and a dish she would make with her mother. I'm gonna be making a dish called camarones enchilados, which is essentially a Puerto Rican version of Creole shrimp. It's a little bit spicy, which is unusual for most Puerto Rican food because most of Puerto Rican food is not a spicy uh, food. But this dish is, an enchilado basically means it has chili, mm. so it has spice. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of olive oil in my pot. We always use olive oil at the base of our dishes. And then I'm gonna throw in some onions. So I just diced up some onions. This is just a regular white onion. You can use Spanish onion or red onion, whatever you have. One of the things I really love about this dish is the flexibility. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of uh, Puerto Rican food in general is like that because you kind of use what you have. I just smash them, peel them, and then just chop very quickly like this. Nothing too finely minced mm -hmm. or anything. Is this a dish that you would, that's common for every Puerto Rican family? Is it something you would have on a special occasion? So this is kind of a more common dish. Like this is something you might eat on a weekday. It's a very fast dish. Once you see everything, all the veggies start to soften. 
Then you're ready to add those chili flakes. That's that enchilada that we talked about. I'm just using some crushed red chilies. Yeah. And, if, and to taste. So, so if you exactly. don't like particularly spicy, you can do less of that. You can do less. And you can, remember, you can always add more. Yeah. So start with a little. Oh, it smells so it, good. And then mm. go ahead and add more as needed. Uh, now we can go ahead and add in our tomato sauce. And this is just um, crushed tomatoes and then tomato sauce mixed together. Uh, this is one of my favorite spices, is smoked Spanish paprika. Okay. It's also known as pimenton. And that adds this little smokiness. It's similar to chipotle, but without the heat of chipotle. It's very, very good. Adds tons of flavor to this. So the shrimp is not, it's not really a saute, is it? No, no, the shrimp, it's, it's almost like a stew, like a gentle yeah. stew. Uh, and it just cuts right in. Because it's already pretty far along in the cooking. Exactly. The stew part, so this is just kind of the cherry on top. Exactly, the shrimp on top. Mm -hmm. Thank you, yeah, and then you just can stir that up. And then while you do that, I can chop up some cilantro. And how long does your shrimp cook for? So the shrimp, it'll be depending on uh, how hot the sauce is, it'll be a few minutes. That's it. Uh, wow. Definitely no more than like seven minutes. Then we can just serve that with some rice. And you see all the little peppers in there, yeah. the beautiful shrimp, all those flavors. You got your veggies, included. you got your protein, you got the carbs there. Exactly. All in one dish. All in one dish, so gorgeous. And then a little bit more of that cilantro right on top of it. Just a little extra color. And there you go. All right, I'm going to try it now. OK. Let's go. I have every little bit. Mmm. Delicious. Camarones enchilados, a dish of comfort food easy to make that will give you a taste of Latin cuisine. In New York City, I'm Shirley Chan. That looks so good. If only we could get a bite of that dish. It looks so hearty and so, I just, yeah. I have never wanted uh, smell a vision more than right now. Right? So wouldn't that be amazing to get some of those smells? And what I love about this in Puerto Rico, because it is an island country, they're huge with the camarones, the pescado, mm -hmm. all that in their dishes. Right. So it's so good. It's so delicious. You can't get enough of shrimp. Oh. And that just looks amazing, yep. amazing, amazing. All right. Well, now we get to introduce, introduce another Mexican dish. Orale. Have you heard of the <laughs> Mexican Hot Pocket? What? No. Is that a what? burrito? No. What? No. What Mexican is this? Mexican Hot Pocket. <laughs> We're going to find out right now. It's fancier, though, than the regular Hot Pocket. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> yes. So, Kron's Vicky Laviacas takes us to San Francisco's Californios. It's a two Michelin star restaurant led by chef Val Cantu, and he's going to make Tacoyos, inspired by Nani Rosa. We take you to Californios in San Francisco for modern Mexican cuisine. Named for the people of Mexican heritage who lived in California back in the 1800s, Californios is a Michelin star restaurant with Mexican food and drink you have to taste to believe. We've had two Michelin stars several years in a row, and uh, that's the highest that any Mexican restaurant in the world is. Uh, been awarded, so that's a huge uh, honor. The award-winning chef from Humble Roots is Val Cantu. Chef Cantu grew up in a small Texas town. His family had a Mexican restaurant, and his Nani Rosa provided recipes and inspiration. I was very young, but I, you know, remember playing with the tor tortilla balls and just like being around my whole family was really amazing. And that's what brings us back to the pristine kitchen at California's. What is your favorite dish? My favorite dish, uh, probably this one that we're gonna make today, black boyo. Really simple, vegetable based. Um, you know, I feel like I could eat this every single day. Chef, let's just jump right in. Yeah, let's do it, yeah. So yeah, we've got these, we've got our beautiful tortilla press here. We'll put a little uh, wax paper down. We'll... Now say, your grandmother didn't use this. If machine. you don't have a tortilla press, of course you can always use a rolling pin. Take our masa. You're so professional with those, uh, Tortilla balls. <laughs> right. A lot of practice. A lot of experience, yeah. So we'll basically just let this thing fall, give it a light little press. See how it looks. And it's wow. perfect. These are uh, beans called Montezuma's red beans. You can always substitute refried beans. Just put a dab in the center and fold. And this is something that we can make at home. Uh, yeah, I think you can make this at home. I, you know, it's like a Hot Pocket. And place it on a Kamal to heat up for about 90 seconds. You can use a cast iron skillet if you like. And once it's warm and slightly browned, why you just dress it up. A whipped creme fraiche or Mexican crema. And we'll just give it a little uh, design. little design, yeah, a little drizzle. 
fresh right. iceberg lettuce, um, just shredded super finely. This is a uh, cotija cheese. It's just been powderized a little bit finer. Not too much because it is a strong cheese. And then here we've got our salsa matcha. So peanuts, sesame seeds, sunflower seeds, and chili paisia mije. Okay. I, I sense there's some hot in coming. A little bit, is... yeah. Next we've got fresh cactus or nopal. Just something you get out of the yard. Something that we get from our farmers. Uh, these are pickled uh, red onions. Gorgeous. Just kind of like put them on there. And it looks like the Mexican flag. Add some tiny pieces of cilantro. Buen provecho. That's it. Time to taste test. Wow. Looks really good. So fun to make. Yeah. Quick, yeah. easy. Success. This definitely calls for a toast. Just After what you a need. hard day in the kitchen. Exactly. This is what you gotta do. <laughs> <laughs> Salud. Salud. But before we let Chef Cantu go, he's sharing his recipe with us, writing the ingredients and cooking instructions for the California specialty, Tlacoyo, Nani Rosa inspired. So Nani Rosa, she would approve? I think she would approve, yeah. Yeah, there's lots of roses around the restaurant and uh, uh, yeah, my daughter's name is Rose as well, in her honor. In San Francisco, Vicki Liviakis. That looked really good. Absolutely, I just love how so many of these chefs continue that tradition that has been passed down to them by their mom, grandma, great grandma, etc. Do you have a memory of cooking something with your dad, I, your mom, a I family do, member? I do because my mom is uh, is from Mexico, and I know she's taught us. She's the queen of rice, and um, so I know how to make some really good Mexican rice. But then every Christmas, she always make arroz con leche, oh, and she makes one of my the best, the best arroz con leche. It's like a, a rice pudding, but it's got a lot of cinnamon. It's got a, a lot, lot of vanilla of in it. It's so good. It's that really, really with good. pan dulce, oh, sweet bread. And you're done for That's the night. That's your staple. Yeah, yep. and you said it too yourself. You've grown up cooking, and your mom has inspired the way you cook when you're at home now. Yeah, my mom and my dad. They were all. They would alternate. We always had a homemade meal every night. Oh. Every night they would come home from you know an eight hour shift if not longer and then come and make food from scratch and so um yeah i learned a lot of recipes from them it's really special to have that so then i can pass that on to my children and continue that tradition and so invite really your friends special. over when you're cooking which i'm still waiting for that invite where's that coming <laughs> just kidding it'll happen one day one day un dia. But you'll have to help that, claro of course all make right. some tortillas. <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> how about dessert, Marco? Oh, that's important. We can't have a cooking show, cooking segment, without some dessert. And one, t one of my favorites is right there on your screen, churros. You love churros? Love them. Crispy on the outside, oh, soft warm. on the inside when they're super, super oh. warm. That's the best. They're so good. And now they get all fancy with them. They drizzle a little chocolate or, or dulce dip de leche. Them. Or yeah, di yeah. Dip them oh, dip them's better because you get more caramel. coverage. Exactly. Yeah, it's very good there. So that's a very popular dessert. How to make these churros. Yeah, Raul Martinez of our San Francisco station, Fox 5, caught up with the first Latina master chef, Claudia Sandoval, to make this tasty treat. Let's take a look. Here she is, the first Latino master chef, and she's joining us now because here's the deal. You're gonna teach us how to make a classic Mexican dessert. Claudia Sandoval in the house. Good. <laughs> how are you? I'm great, how are you? Everybody loves a churro, but I, does everybody know how to make it? Probably not. Probably not, and I don't think that people realize how easy it is, you know? It's not easy, what I burn toast. It is easy, I have like literally like one cup of water, one cup of milk, like uh, four tablespoons of butter, a little bit of salt, and then you toss in this flour and that's- And that's it and that makes a churro. Yeah, I mean, there are more complicated versions. See, see? <laughs> but I like to go with this easy one. It's it's actually sure. a part of my cookbook, La Descocina. Yep, yep. 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 So do you wanna do you wanna just watch? I mean, I, I'll watch for the beginning. Okay. It's Hispanic Heritage Month, so obviously yes. you kind of know what you're doing a little bit. Okay, talk to me. Give me a play-by-play, -play, if you will. Yeah, so we've already got uh, you know the one cup of milk again. Uh, this has already been melted down. All you want to do is make sure that that melts down, and then qu very quickly you add in that one dump two cups of uh, all-purpose flour. Got it. It doesn't have to be any kind of fancy flour, just whatever you use at okay. home. And then you just mix, mix, mix. And so see how quick this starts to happen it starts to separate from the pan it Got starts it. to become less and less um, stuck to the sides of the pan but this takes you know very little time uh, do you want to help me oh sure 
You know I've been working out. I'm, I'm so, ready to go. I'm sweating. My makeup's going to fall off. Look at that. <laughs> then in the meantime, what I did was I fitted a piping bag okay. with a closed star tip. How about I have you do one more thing while that keeps yes, cooking? Please. So this is uh, two cups of sugar, and you're going to add two tablespoons of okay. cinnamon. Dump and you're going to go, yep, just dump it in there and then mix it through with that fork. Okay. And so that's going to create that mixture that you need for dusting your churros. So this is really the texture that you're looking for. Wow. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that off, get it okay. off the heat, and right while it's still warm, yes. put it into the piping bag. There it is. Here All it right, comes. So Listen to this. Piping bag. Push through. And go ahead and go right in. And then what you want to do is you want to have some cut scissors. It. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You, you can either cut it or if it falls off, then great. Look at that. Then you just cut. Oh, my goodness gracious. It doesn't take very long. It does not take very yeah. long. So you want to go ahead and bring those out oh. and kind of let them hang out. And you want to make sure that you have deep enough oil. So right. 375 degrees. But there you go. Oh. You've got this churro. So then you come over here. You're dump them in here. You Look got at it. Oh. You just put oh. them into oh. that oh. cinnamon sugar yes. mixture. And then you're just going to kind of toss them around back and forth. Now, meanwhile, what I did was I took some, you know, those bittersweet chocolate chips yes. that you can get. I took one cup, added one and a half cups of oh, heavy it. cream, right? And so then I'm gonna add some cinnamon to make it right. Mexican chocolate dipping sauce. Grab go. that plate, let's plate. We gotta, we oh, gotta we make got it look plate. pretty. Look pretty. Okay. Yeah, we gotta make, you know, you wanna go ahead and put these on here, okay, make it look one. all nice and oh, beautiful. That was my job. I that was that. your job. <laughs> I had one job, You had one job. Here we go. Okay, there's your presentation. Wait, gonna, I, I gotta be fancy. We're gonna make, add a little bit of... Oh my God, glitter? Edible glitter, you know, just because okay. we're, we're a little fancy. Okay, so now it's time. To, I gotta try this? Yes, it please smells try good. it. It's you gonna taste try it even better. Are you ready? Do I dip it or do you do the Yeah, thing? no, definitely dip Here it in the go. Mexican we're chocolate. We're dipping the fresh churro in the Mexican chocolate. Here we go. Oh my goodness. How is it? Oh, oh. <laughs> delicioso. Gracias. You're Claudia. very welcome. Amazing as always. Mm. <laughs> his lies, his eyes just lit yeah. up, right, with you happiness from that churro. He really liked that. And I love churros. They're so good. I haven't met one person who doesn't like churros. I think they're just universal. They're you know, great. For everyone. Yeah. It makes everyone happy. I love walking into bakeries oh. and the churros are like, so long. And they're just hanging there? And they're just hanging there. They're, they're saying, so warm. Jennifer, take me home. Eat me. Not just one either. <laughs> it's more like five. It can get very, very dangerous. Right? So you're hungry then? I'm hungry. I'm How about hungry we go too. eat? Vamos a comer. If you guys want to eat some of this fabulous food, you don't have to go to all these different cities. The good thing is that these wonderful chefs have shared the recipes. They have shared the ingredients. And you can actually see these, pull up the recipe, and make this at home with your family as well. All I have to do is you click on the community tab on our website. Then you choose uh, uh, Hispanic Heritage Month. That's right. Boom. Yeah, just go to WFLA.com and you'll see all the, uh, the recipes. So thank you to all the chefs who... Uh -huh. Uh, shared those recipes with us, and of course, all the reporters from Next Star Nation that um, that oh, shared. They had all such that a tough gig. Yes. They were they were just all a terrible assignment. Terrible huh? assignment. Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And remember, Hispanic Heritage Month lasts until October 15th, El Día de la Raza. And we will be uh, broadcasting special stories about Hispanic heritage throughout the month all across Next Star Station. So once again, thank you so much for joining us for Sabor Latino. I'm Jennifer Peñate alongside Marco Villarreal. Happy Hispanic Heritage Month, everyone. Provecho. Celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month September 15th through October 15th. Join us as we honor Hispanic culture and celebrate the many contributions made throughout American history.